Hello everybody, welcome to the first round match of CCL Season 47 between Malala Noos and Sindin. Uh, well, first of all, in the booth is PC. Hello, Purple Chest. Good evening, good evening. Looking forward to this one. Couple of cracking teams here, Jim. Yeah, this looks like, I think this is, well, it's definitely the best Lizardman team. And I think it's the best Dwarf team. Uh, lots of guard, mighty blow on both sides. Very exciting. Yeah, I think it's, I mean... If, if you're putting a dwarf team together that's got some toys, got some fun things beyond just a basic build, uh, but yet still isn't too bloaty, I think this is pretty much what you'd come up with. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty nice, isn't it? I think you would. I think it would be a, a bit more, of, well, a bit better to be more efficient. I guess it's okay. Once you're this TV, you can have a bit of reliability with a second runner. But this, this runner should have been the main mm. one, right? You probably should have. Yeah, been absolutely. A couple more game. games just to develop it up to block. Um, even just block on it would have done, wouldn't it, with the plus strength and the plus movement. Yeah. It's slightly, maybe, arguably the wrong place for the strength to land, but, uh, you know, a strong runner to just hang around in the backfield. The potatoes that come through probably isn't going to do him any harm, is it? No, no, it's... Um, it does mean if you're bolted, you've got a, a second very good runner to pick up with. And the other strength did land on a beard, which is, a, I think, a nice place to put it. Um, I, I'd rather that, certainly, than a slayer, which always seemed to pick the damn things up. <laughs> and even blitzers have limited value at strength four, whereas a beard really holding that line together when you're facing something like lizards, knowing you can put your strength four in. It's just a shame it's it's a little bit more developed as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mind, I need to talk about teams not being developed enough after my <laughs> shambolic <laughs> undead team. <laughs> not a shambling undead team, a shambolic undead team. <laughs> well, I was rather disappointed it took me more than 20 games to qualify this time, but despite that, I still... Um, have a tiny little team this time that I should think will get roundly beaten round one. But well, dwarves, are, dwarves still have, to be in, isn't it? Dwarves have everything they need, don't they? From the start, that's the thing. Like mm. you know, like they, they've got the tackle. Uh, tackle mighty is is a, such a big deal, and I didn't have any tackle on my team at all, which uh, which is not good. <laughs> well, I mean, unless you could make up for it with lots of dirty player and wrestle, and you, you didn't have that route either, did you? So. Even with the blodgers was always going to be very tricky. I mean, it's the dwarf problem here, isn't it? It's the age-old issue. If he, if he can get hold of these skinks, he can definitely take them down. He has the skills to do so. But there's that huge ward of strength for AV9 standing in his way. Yes. Um, which is also quicker than him, which is uh, somewhat of a paradox for the dwarfs facing lizards. Yeah. Yeah, every, everyone, every, all of the all of the Reddit experts say simply kill all of the skinks, but uh, it's not that easy. It's not easy to do. There's a there's a wall of strength four that's yeah that's twice as fast as you basically <laughs> in between well, them. As a as a dwarf coach, I don't know about you, I always hope people have uh, have watched all the guides. Uh, there's one famous one uh, that says that lizards should of course um, you know, deal with problems with their skinks, uh, and I really hope people do that a lot. Um, <laughs> Give me your skinks. Yeah. But here, of course, yes, I mean, the, the quandary is, so these lizards are stronger, they're faster, and they've all got block and guard now, so you can't even one-die them or uphill them. Right away. Yeah. Um, there really is no good answer as dwarves. It's getting a stun and using that to get hold of the skinks. It's hoping they don't position well. Yeah. Um, it, it's really very, very difficult. Yeah, and as much as much as Tri loved his min max lizards, which did win Chalice, to be fair, um, w when lizards have all this mighty blow on them, it's horrendous because you can't even like try and like man them up, right? Like you know, I mean, you can't like try and isolate them or anything one on one because they'll just beat the shit out of you with mighty blow, repeated mighty blow hits. It's it's yes. horrible. Yeah, the same. I mean, you can't you can't get outnumbered by them because they they have that ability to beat you down. The thick skull isn't as big enough advantage to mean that you're not going to get some stuns like they will. It, it's all about the momentum, and it's so difficult, this matchup for the Dwarves. Mm. Um, and then, of course, if there's a good skink, and there is here, not carrying the ball, but, uh, you know, hanging around, sort of not doing much, um, then that's always a worry, because, you know, it can beat you in a single turn. Yeah. Well, there, there is a wizard for Malala Noose. There's a wizard and a bear. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why he's... He's, he's carrying on the... Bolt bait. Well, I'll let you say it. The bolt bait, there we are. Yes. That's a good word, isn't it? <laughs> The Tempest, the Tempest Tempter. <laughs> yes. The big stiff lightning rod. <laughs> God. Will we see a getting, double clear fight? Getting too, okay. Yeah, okay, I'll stop. <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's, I, I like your humour, PC. <laughs> 
stay with me. <laughs> yeah, this is some classic Lizard Manning here, just shuffling the ball around, making sure it's never within range of the dwarves in case that line falls apart. Yeah. Keeping the lizard strong. Now that they've got the guard and the block, of course, they can act as a guard wall, the same as the dwarves, and just present a, just a line of irresistible, impossible to blitz, nightmarish strength for. Yep. Um, it's always fun facing lizards. Hmm. Well, it sometimes is. If, if you can remove a few yep. Saurus randomly, that's when the game swings, isn't it? Just Absolutely. Lizards are with like... One, with one gone, you're already starting to look into some good numbers here. Ah, ah, instantly followed up by a... A fail on that, that runner getting away. Mm. Because blockless, that is, you know, it's an AV8, it's a real tempter, that runner. You can see a lot of lizards heading in that direction anytime you can. Mm. Oh, and the lizards hit straight back with another removal. Ooh, -hoo, apple works. But that's their only apple, and it's been used on a rather rubbish long beard. Yeah, but I mean, there's nothing better to come on on the bench, is there? The bench is pretty trash on this dwarf team. It's, it's all out there on the field, so. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I agree with the with the apple usage, but it's uh, yeah, it's it's notable, isn't it? Yeah, it's unfortunately like obviously he feels like he's got to do it to maintain numbers. Um, yeah, and you might not take another cast, but you've given up a lot of mighty blow hits inevitably. So yeah, it's a, it's an unfortunate, uncomfortable apple, but one one that's probably. Well, at least yes, definitely I'm, understandable and probably correct. Yeah, totally. I'm not a big lover of Chalice Equity, but again, you know, having that player out next round is probably not something. It's worth the gamble, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, he's got so many much, he's got so many better. So yeah. many better dwarves. You just gotta rely on the AV9 fix skull sometimes. It's it's the USP. Here we go, the, the elf screen, but it's yeah. the elf screen is pretty ineffective versus movement eight uh, skinks and movement six sauras that can swing around so easily. It's, there, it's there. that heart, heartbreaking moment, Jim, isn't it? I am known occasionally to ask the question, are you the orc or the elf in a matchup? And when dwarves realize they're the elf, it's, it's a sad day. Yeah, and unfortunately, it's so easy for lizards to be both, isn't it? That's the thing. Yeah. That's the. It's so easy for them to be both. But yeah, if they lose a few, then then they, you know, and that can happen randomly versus anybody, right? And then they can get into trouble against anybody pretty pretty quickly and easily. But um, if that doesn't happen, then yeah, it's it's rough times. <laughs> lizards, of course, with no time pressure at all. Two turns will easily see them the length of this field. But yeah. already we're seeing them uh, work some space on the left here. Through that run, as strong as he is, he's also weak because of his lack of block. I said he'd be a blitz target repeatedly. Leave him hanging out, he is going to get hit. And it does create that space which the dwarves are already going to struggle to, to cover. And of course, if they struggle too hard and cover too hard, it'll leave space up the other flank. Yeah. And the lizards can cross this field in a heartbeat. Yeah, it's just sick, isn't it? It's, it's it, like, you know, it's... It's obviously over the top to compare skinks to gutters, but they've got the same kind of kind of like threat range as gutters, haven't they? Yeah. And like getting yeah, yeah. into the opposing half of the the opposing half of the pitch, whereas like orcs, okay, orcs have got loads of strength four and stuff and guard, but they've they've got to you know push all the way to here to be able to score. Yeah. Whereas lizards just need to push to here to be able to score. It's, it's ridiculous. It's completely yes, ridiculous. Certainly not easy, which is why Elliot, of course, is very keen to bring his dwarves in with its move eight runner. Mm. Giving him that uh, that distance potato. Mm. Now, what the dwarves are really hoping to do here is to force the uh, the lizards into some kind of tight cage where a wizard might be effective. Yep. Oh, well, there's there's a big cast that we should see an apple here. Yeah, that's uh, there's a swing of the equity. Yeah, yeah, I mean instant yeah, apple. Straight in, yeah. Didn't have to think about that. No, again, these are two players at a level where you know they're, they're not in it just to reach round two. They're thinking, you know, how deep can my run go? How deep is your run? How deep, how deep is your run? Um, so again, you know, it's, it's all TV on the pitch at all times, isn't it? You're, you're trying to, to some degree, always high roll all six games if you're trying to win a chalice. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Ooh. 
Now we do seem to have a skink cage forming. There is a strength four runner. It's on the ground, but it is knocking around that neck of the woods. Yeah. Would you wizard, Jim? There's a. Oh, it was nearly a three skink fireball, wasn't it? But it isn't. Yeah. You'd, you'd have to think about it, wouldn't you? Here, you'd have to. You've got to think about it. Maybe if you are going to stop this drive, it's here. But I, I just don't think you're going to. No, I don't think you're going to, and I don't think it's it's not a great whiz, and I don't think you're going to stop it. But maybe no. you still have to. Maybe you just have to. I mean, the recovery is that runner takes it and throws it into a pocket. He has gone for it and gets the kill. Yeah. Well, it was the uh, the lightning attractor. <laughs> it was. The kindling for the fire, if you will. <laughs> and sure enough, he is taking and another skink gone. Reddit fans will be celebrating. <laughs> You know. Now, has that created the pass opportunity that I think is the only sensible way out of this, or is he going to try and hold it on the four? I think he's just going he's to holding on the four, isn't he? Oh my yeah. god, he didn't GFI. Oh god, on the edge! Oh, Jim. He didn't GFI. He oh, he's GFI. coming in. He's coming in ahead of it. That, well, it needed to be another one ahead of it, didn't it? And even then, Skinks can still... He's got guard, though, so it's, it's, a, it's a 3D uphill. Unless a 3D uphill. Well, no, because he can just slip the other skink in behind. Can't yeah, he? but but then he's then he's, he's used as the skink, hasn't he? So. Yes, but it's going out anyway. <laughs> but yes, he's probably stopped the score. Hmm. Because of the double skink removal. Yeah. Okay, so it turns out the Wiz did work pretty well, but I still hate this edging. Yeah, I hate it not GFI. Yeah, hate that. And there you go, justice. <laughs> Gets him on the both down, of course, not the surf, because, you know, blood bowl. Yeah. Nothing eternally with the sense of humour. <laughs> no, I think this Crocs has to go early, doesn't it? Yeah, sure enough. Straight in with the one die on the Crocs. Yeah. Decisive, solid play that was absolutely what was needed. I mean, we don't know how quick it was, but it was the obvious first choice. Yes. I'm in my head going to say that he saw that instantly, players at this level. Yes, you would hope. You would hope so. It looks like he's defended the score. Certainly does. Oh, maybe oh, counter score, oh. yes. He's well, that was a thing of great beauty. Oh, my God. No! Icarus, he reached for the sun, Jim. He didn't stun this guy up. Was he stunned or did he run out of time? He must have run out of time because he wasn't stunned. Not as I recall. Oh man, I didn't think he was stunned either. I mean, it was a hell of a play he came up with, but clearly the time pressure did get to him. Yeah. Oh, he's just out of range anyway. He is, yeah. Okay. So that's why he didn't stand up because he just he left him down. Yeah. So, so yeah, no risk. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. I was being a bit. So now he's put the Saurus in place in case of the failed GFI, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then the extremely unlikely Saurus long bomb. Oh, yes. I want to see it more than I want to see it. It's not even a GFI, is it? No, no it's a blitzer. No, he just ran. Oh, what a lovely play! We both two dwarf experts. We both missed that lingering blitzer. Yeah, well, actually, I thought the blitzer should have blocked so that you would have had two chances to hit with tackle. Like, you know, if if the if the first block was at like a push and he had stand firm, I think, then you could push. So I would have hit first with a blitzer, um, and then so yeah, I was I was actually obviously totally wrong because he was a handoff. Brilliant. It was an extremely unlikely chain of events, but it worked perfectly. Yeah, I still didn't like that stall on the edge. No, no, I really would have liked, didn't like the GFI. He still had the reroll, right? So I, I would have definitely done the GFI with the ball. But he's 1 0 up and he's receiving, and the lizards are down. Um, down to Saurus in quality, but they've still got 11 players. Yes, the, the skink removal, useful as it was, hasn't stuck, has it? There's still plenty of the little buggers. Yeah, he had 13. And, uh, was also on 11, but yeah, Apo's gone, so. Yeah, both now apples for, gone. Now it's for keepsies. Mm. Fabulous yes. position for the dwarves here. You can turtle, you can drive, you can pretty much do as you want. Yeah. I would be super prioritising this pickup. This phase one becomes so key. Get the ball, get it somewhere. Yes.
Yes, Kill Bill, yes. It's it's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting. Just as well, like, early removals can, like, uh, can be a thing if you do get lucky as well. Well, I mean, I was just starting to be very downbeat and suggest that perhaps just letting them score eventually, trying to get some removals, driving back using the wizard and hoping for overtime ball was the answer, but it's that was a much stronger play. And I do think usually I prefer to, you know, get hung for a, uh, taking a chance than live regretting not trying. Yeah, I, I thought it was... I wouldn't have been happy doing it, but I would have thought I would have had to do it. <laughs> if you, that was my that was my opinion of the wizard. Well, at least we could rest sure in the knowledge that we were both at least looking at it and talking about it when it happened, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> so there we are. And in many ways, we were right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows that Jimmy Fantastic is always right. <laughs> well, that is, of course, the most important thing and the sole reason to talk about other people's game. Yeah. Oh, wow. Huge removal. Yeah, that is very, very big. Things are looking very, very bleak for these lizards now. Mm. All on a very risky but uh, very successful whiz. And that second skin take out, I think, was just as important as downing the ball. Mm. Add one more skin into that equation, and I think the lizards would have retained the ball reasonably simply. Yeah. What do you think about the non-follow there, or, or at least non-marking? I would have really liked to have marked those two down players with one dwarf. Person. Yeah, I, I certainly I'd have done that. I always sacrifice... I mean, that guard dwarf that you're hovering over is the one, isn't it? You mm. push that one forwards to keep them down in a single place. Oof! Wow! Nice. And that's gone for the next game. And that, to be fair, that would have controlled his blitz as well, probably, rather than losing this really good blitzer. But never mind. <laughs> well, I mean, that's why you do it, Jim, isn't it? You're, you're trying to determine where the hits are coming. Yep. And to get two or three lizards back, yes, you probably sacrifice a chosen blitz to do that instead. Right. Um, I suppose from the dwarf's point of view, he's thinking he doesn't need to advance. He, he you know, just needs to retain this ball and he's won the game, so... Like blitzing with a strength four, I know it's not exactly rocket science, but you know, like yeah. it's it's less commitment, isn't it, to, uh, to blitz every time? But yeah, I mean, this makes even less sense of that lack of advancing. Now he's feeling he has to advance just to keep some pressure on the lizards, and because he wants to keep blitzing. Mm. Oh well, a single poor choice. Another removal. Wow. <laughs> Just as I was thinking, these lizards are looking a tiny bit thin with only five monsters. Yeah. Um, a dwarf goes too. Yeah, so now it's nine versus ten, isn't it? It is, yeah. Dwarfs getting <laughs> found on a bit. Five of them are skins, though, so can we really count those as a full player? <laughs> Not really, no. No, only five Sauras. So in many ways, it's seven and a half lizards, isn't it? Versus, um, <laughs> Something like that. Versus nine dwarves. But then there's, you know, there's, the Soros count for a bit extra, and the Skinks count for a bit less. So, so perhaps that balances, yes. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, again, reliably blitzing with that strength four. I mean, there's no reason not to. It's got Mighty Blow as well. It's got Guard if it gets in any trouble. It's it's a lovely piece. Yeah. He's stretching out here, isn't he? I'm not sure that's a great idea because the uh, the lizards, yeah, the it's easier for them to, like, apply their force to one spot, isn't it? Yes, but as long as they're doing that, I suppose he's not that worried. He can just let them do that for the next six turns and wins. No. I'm slightly worried about isolating the strength four here. Yeah, look, he's going to put a Saurus on each of the front dwarves and then hit the strength four. Yeah. If he can control that blitzing, then he removes a lot of the... No, he's coming into the middle. Well, I know. Okay, at least the strength four is controlled, but... Oh, dear. Okay. Well, he's just hoped up base, base, basing, I guess. Boy, howdy. He does need to turn them over, so he does have to create those opportunities for fails. That's true. And he is outnumbering him right now. Mm. 
I quite like this attempt to keep the uh, the stand firm and the strength of four marginalised and then pick on the rest of the dwarves. I think that's about as sensible as he can try. I'd have committed to it though, I'd have tagged that blitzer at least, because yeah, he's left that gap through. Well, that push tightens it up, so that's exactly where I'd have put him in the first place. Yeah, yeah. But then he want, he was able to sidestep that if he didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it's six and it's two. He's a blodge points. piece, so putting yourself on a blitzer is still a 30% of knockdown. Yeah. But it, it all worked out all right. Yeah. Yeah, this is the thing, right? Because now, because he spreads far out, that's what I'm saying, right? Like, you know, he's he was spread out, but now he wants it tight in, doesn't he? And and he's yes. just a bit exposed. And, and the... Uh, the lizards can collapse in easily, and the, the dwarves can't, so... Oh, wow, another cast. Oh, dear, yeah. This is getting a bit of a dicing now. Well, and the problem is you can't run away from lizards because they're quicker than you. So, <laughs> this is the point where, yes, you need everything in a turtle, and you're just trying to defend, even if it's two dice and just pushing things away. Oh, my God, he did the triple uphill. Yeah, if, if he... I'd only have a Saurus up there to hit afterwards, eh? He does, doesn't he? he has no, it's already... It's... Oh, no, you're right. The Blitz yeah. can come in. Yeah. I thought the one in front was red. No, well, in that case, that was ballsy and good. I love it. And there's a skink free to collect if this works. Wow. That was that was wild, wasn't it? The triple uphill. Yeah. Wouldn't and now it's just a... Three plus dodge, four plus pickup. Oh, he should have definitely done this first. <laughs> and then it would have been, oh no, because he's got guard there. Yeah, okay. Oh man, yeah, that was that was really ballsy, the triple uphill. And then he rolled a one on the dodge. <laughs> I mean, it was a block piece, so it wasn't terrible. But yeah, it was, um, it was true. It could have the sticking post time, wasn't it? Mm. You sure the play, guys? <laughs> That's why we come. It's the place you can't get anywhere else except most other bubble channels. <laughs> yep. <laughs> now these sidestepping skinks are being a right pain in the ass. But one's gone. Oh, he's. It's got to re-roll it because it doesn't even have block. You know, I so often don't do three dies uphill. And perhaps we should, Jim. I've just done a bit of sampler play. Uh, because it was a block um, skink, to not get the skull is 57.8%, so 58%. So that's not terrible, is it? It's not terrible, no. It's not terrible to not turn over. You get the push is a little luckier. It's uh, about 30% to actually get the push, rather than uh, they can choose a both down, obviously, and not be pushed. Yeah. But it's, it's, you know, it's not outrageous to, to chance it, but he desperately needed to get it into a place to turn over. Yeah. And sure enough, it has created that opportunity, so I, I, I'm going to call it as exactly the right play, and I didn't see it, so well done. And there we are. He's picked up just in the casually in the two tackle zones. With the AG4 stunty. Yep. Now all of these removals, unbelievable amount of removals, mm. are equalising the ones he's taken, which is more realistic, I think, to lose Skinks and Saurus. I don't know. Well, we face a, a brutal game of sevens in overtime, don't we? Yeah, this is this is a really wild, lots of lots of damage game. I mean, the dwarves are still removing things, just can't remove enough well, now, can they? Yeah, it, it's just what you've got to keep doing, isn't it? It's what I'm now thinking of as the ungirt route. Don't panic and <laughs> keep hitting. Yeah. <laughs> Which, Alan, don't, I'm not taking the piss. I thought he did that expertly in the semi and the final of the mm. last chalice. Um, you know, impressive cool headedness. Hmm. Knew what he had and kept leaning into it, and eventually it came good. That's that's good play. Wow. 
these dwarves trying to recreate that. Recreate, recreate that. There is only going to be one kickoff um, event unless he goes in on 15. There's a good argument to go in on 15 here, isn't there? Yeah. I'll get two rolls at those KOs. The dwarves are not coming back in a single turn. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Gadenik. <laughs> Thank you very much for the raid. <laughs> well, that big counts as a tactical insight. And sure enough, he goes in early to get the two KO rolls. Boy, howdy. <laughs> Hold it. Hello, Skuro. Hello, Faimir. Hello, everybody. Welcome, raiders. Wheelstone Raiders, welcome to the gym CU. Back on first roll, three of the lizards back, but only one saw us. Of course, a second roll to come. I think that's the right move, unless suddenly, obviously, a brutal line of scrimmage. Yeah, or just a two-turn uh, score, right? He, he went in on yeah. turn fourteen rather than turn fifteen. It was it was one earlier than I think he probably should have done, but yes. It also means there needs to be some level of defence here. You can still defend, you know, six or seven away, make those dwarves either go for it to just even touch you or pull re-rolls that way, which looks to be what he's doing. The dwarves are down to a single re-roll, so that is a huge factor here. Yes. How um, embarrassing. But I don't know. It's... it's... Is it 8v8 or... Is there a one hidden behind that multi skilled Saurus? There is, and it's eight, eight versus nine. Yeah, eight yeah. Versus nine. And potentially um, nine versus 11. Yes. For all the time. Well, I still like the early score. I think there was another turn of stalling very available. Yes. The dwarves are certainly going to go and try and push down a flank, and who wouldn't? Yeah. It's a big question is whether you put the reroll in. Yes. Beautiful kick to the opposite corner. Oh, but it's a high kick, balancing that right out to some degree. Oh, baby. Well, do you cross and hand straight off? I think that's the only answer here. He doesn't have enough dwarves to defend that ball in the backfield, so it has to hand off and move forwards this turn, I think. Mm -hmm. Oof. Another, another removal, and now it's it versus it. Yes, yeah, amusingly done there with a blitzer without tackle. Um, <laughs> always my favourite way of removing skins. Yep. Doesn't doesn't have does to put the GFI in. To, to does start the hand off. Here goes the strength for potato. Ooh. That's an interesting place to choose to be. Yeah, I don't like that. I also don't like that block because he could have blocked with this guy, couldn't he, with two assists and then got the strength yep. four up there. Yeah, yeah. With, I mean, uh, doing a similar job, but with more chance of helping next time. Mm. Oh, cheeky Ooh. Oh, he didn't. And uh, why not in on the other mm. skink? And or why not there? Because this is a punch and then a direct. Route. Yeah, and yeah. This is strength I mean, three instead of strength four, and he's not even doing it. One of two places, but not there. <laughs> Basically, yeah. either one had good value, that one had none. Yeah. That one, it may as, well, may as well not be there. So he's just going for the break tackle. <coughs> yeah. I much preferred punching. I guess if you push him, it's rubbish and he can't hit, so at least this way you get the Yes. Yeah. yeah. There we are. It was fairly simple in the end. And had he turned left, it would have added one more square to the break tackle, so one more two plus. Had he turned right, as you said, there were other benefits in terms of not being able to be blitzed from the rear. And no one likes getting blitzed from the rear, Jim. <laughs> Not usually, no. So, I've heard there's some people who like it. <laughs> well, to each their own. Yeah, I don't but judge. I like anything. keeping my back door firmly shut. I don't judge. No, I don't judge. <laughs> As I was discussing, I think it was with Gadaini the other day, though. Um, I've always thought I'd be fabulous at being homosexual. <laughs> I don't want style. Came out of nowhere. Taste. No, I don't mind musicals. I grow a nice moustache. <laughs> Wait, um, I, look, I look quite good in leather, but it's it's the sex. I just it doesn't appeal. <laughs> there's a counter score on here. There's a counter score on PC. Look there is. This. I mean, we've seen it before, and it's coming again. Yeah. This time from the lizards. Yeah. Wow. The, suddenly, the turn, the score on turn fourteen looks amazing. Yeah, it does. It suddenly looks like an incredibly wise decision. 
this game's been played on some very high levels, hasn't it? There's been some beautiful um, interplay of opportunity and chance here. Yeah. I hate that block, though. Like, basically irrelevant. Yeah. Block. Yeah, absolutely. At this point, it achieves nothing. Okay, he wanted to go that way, but it didn't need to. No. Oh, got he has rolls. to put... He's definitely got the, the re-rolls for this. He's got plenty. Oh, and it doesn't. We still get to... No, because there's one turn left of killing. Oh, no, that's it. It's overtime. It's overtime. No way. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, GFK. Oh, both. Both. Oh, both wolves. And, oh, oh croc still out. two lizards. That's the 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 crocs he calls sleeps on. Mm. In the chalice, the forty-eighth chalice, the crocs he calls sleeps tonight. <laughs> but the lizards win the toss, which I think means it's all over. Yeah, it should do. Nine. And yeah, nine is not enough dwarves to cover the field. You just mosey's left to right until there's a space and then go with all your skinks, don't you? Mm. Yeah. And if it costs you a couple of skinks, that's fine. You'll shoot still get there. Very bleak for the dwarves here. They need a ten, really. Yeah. Particularly with the lizards having two rerolls to cover things. I, I, yeah, I'd be unhappy about this as an outcome. Yeah, but I mean, nine was all they could have, right? With the three cars, so they they got they they got their two back. But um, yeah, 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 it's just just what can you do? Like you lose the toss, and it's lizards, isn't it? Well, I mean, that's why he pushed so hard for the two turn. But I I didn't like the pattern he ended up with, Jim. That potato always looked incredibly vulnerable to the break tackle. Yeah, 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 and like I don't mind the break tackle that he's got, right? With four, with four five skills, the break tackle's yeah. okay. It's, like yeah, when I fine. object to break tackle is as a first skill when people say to take as a first skill, but yeah, yes, once you've already got they're... block mighty blow tackle, it's all right, isn't it? Yes, at, it, at that point it's it's decent. Even in the new rule set, I mean, even just turning it into a four plus from a five plus is probably decent on such a key killer. Yeah, but no, if people are taking it early, I mean, I don't mind speaking my mind, Jim. You know that. If people are taking it early, it's a crutch because they're terrible at positioning and they should learn better. Yes. Conceded and load in screen. Amazing. I didn't even notice the players' names. At least I'm having fun. <laughs> Punching the screen. <laughs> Idiotic game. <laughs> Windows update. Please. Backup runner. Please delete this team. <laughs> I don't love Fend on that runner, but... No, there's not a lot else for him though, isn't there? There's no problem. You know, a leader, block leader, kick off return. And yeah, at that time I tend to go tackle. Or yeah. maybe kick. I think kick can have some uses. They tend to line up your runner centrally. But it's, I mean, it's not terrible, and certainly if you're going to allow your ball carrier to get hit as much as he has done, then it, it has some value. Yeah. Well, the thing, the thing is, Dr. Funk, right, with Bull Centaurs, you've got, like, I like break tackle, even first skill on Bull, bull Centaurs, mm. because Bulls, but with Bull Centaurs, you've got chaffs that are immobile and aren't strong and are slow. So you need your, your fast strength four to be able to reposition. Like, you ha they have to be able to reposition for the chaffs, but... With lizards, you just don't need to because they can block each other free and do things. And there is another option, Jim. I've seen it run where people, you know, the, the chaos dwarf blockers being so mobile, they pile the uh, the bulls in there to give a strength advantage, perhaps even some frenzy. And then they respond to problems with their hobgoblins, and then the hobgoblins get there and die like flies because it's a terrible, <laughs> terrible idea. <laughs> yes, um, but you know, I have seen people do that. Yeah, and and you can still use your block break tackle bulls to 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 fight in those situations where they need to fight, right? Like against yes. orcs and stuff, they they do need to fight yeah. sometimes. But yeah, um, they do. And your hobgoblins sometimes do have to try and solve problems, but yes. the main problem they're going to solve is the overpopulation of hobgoblins in your team. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, so he's going a bit bit more aggro than maybe he needs to here, o opening up a, yeah, a high roll I, chance. I, a I just wouldn't have the ball that near the dwarves, where mm. a, a nice little tackle hit and suddenly there's tackle on the ball. Why? Yeah. Why have I let that happen? Yeah, could have been tackle on this guy as well. 
and, and yeah. maybe tackle on that guy. He could have maybe had tackle on like loads of skinks. But then maybe if he does, then he's exposed to the Saurus. Like you know, it's easy. To, like, easy. If to say I'm trying it. to, I mean, there's been some pretty good play from both sides. If we're trying to see the upside of this as a shape, it's that he is pulling the dwarves in right where he needs them. He's got most of them now in mobile, and he can now just choose a way to be where they're not. Yes. Yeah. It, it compresses the the drive exactly. isn't it, into just a couple yeah. of turns. It goes straight for the breakthrough, and then and, uh, and with only two rerolls, there's a lot of sense in doing that. Yeah. And no apple anymore, as he just took another cast. Yep. And yeah, now he's beating them off, and uh, it's a 2 yep. plus to score almost, isn't it? Yeah, it makes his 2 plus dodge, and now he's got two skinks to come with him and protect him from that runner. Mm. Very easy to free a Saurus. Well, I'll say very easy 55% of the time. Nope. No, I would have been one wider with the bottom skink. I know that the runner will still get there, but I, I would rather he got there with virtually nothing left. Yeah. I see, he was freeing this other skink to uh, to close the shape out. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Well, that's not right corner to be aiming for, is it? Uh, no, because he can just get the other one without the GFI, yeah. and then he can yeah, do that to and the end. Exactly. Yeah. And also that side is where the strength four is anyway. Yeah. And I would have still had that wider. I would have still had that wider, as you say, and then go there and then he dodges. In him. case of a fail like this. Mm. It does allow the dodge in slightly easier, but, you know, everything has a cast. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's possibly the first genuine, real, I don't like that at all play that we've seen. Yeah. yeah. I think that saw us headed for the wrong corner. Uh, I don't particularly like the breakthrough play in total. No. It was a little bit too desperate for someone I felt was well ahead of the game. Yeah. Oh, we'll scatter the gym. Oh, and another one on the GFI. Yeah, that's just not lucky. Well, you don't get what you deserve in Blood Bowl, you get what you rest from the dice. <laughs> it is indeed, Skuro. It is indeed. And here we go. Eight times out of nine, he'll just win it this turn, won't he? Yeah. Sensibly putting the uh, the bounce off skink in. Yeah, there we go. Well, I mean, very well played from both. Couple of odd turns, but a, a cracking start to the chalice. What a great game of blood ball. Yeah. I'm slightly ignoring another one that happened. Jim. So. Good, thank you. <laughs> let's let's sweep that one under the rug, shall we? <laughs> Not that it was embarrassing or anything, of course. Uh, I don't feel like no. I played badly or anything. No, I don't think you did. It, it was a brutally difficult matchup for me. Yeah. Well, there you go. Congratulations, Sindane. Commiserations, Malalamus. Yeah, both played great, I thought. Just, uh, you know, just is what it is, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, thank you very much, PC, for coming in and doing the commentary. Glorious to have you, Bash. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.